Okay, we're going to go now to the next question, and this one's going to be for District 2 and District 6, and we'll start with, um, I'll just name the order here, we'll start with District 6, Shonda Harris Muhammad, and then in District 2, we'll do Mariah White, Daisy Weaver, and Kimberly Gray. Okay, this is a... a yeah, this is a rather long two-part question. Okay, part one. How did our schools get millions of dollars in debt? Teachers have to buy their own chalk, erasers, tissues, pencils, etc. It doesn't seem like the budget is even going to the schools and the children that need it. Part two of the question is, was it a good idea to cut plant service, transportation jobs from Richmond Public Schools and to give five-day furloughs to all employees in order to balance the budget? We'll start with 6th uh, District, Shonda harris Muhammad. Answering the second part of the question, no. Plant services, transportation, security, children... Just my passion, let me just call my passion out. What I do every day. Your transportation drivers are the first people that your children see every day. Your custodians clean the building every day. They should. Your secretaries help maintain the building, believe it or not, every day. And there's two group of people you cannot mistreat. That's your custodians and your secretaries. Plant services are a vital piece to keeping the, the school district together, believe it or not. How, how did um, our school system get a debt? I don't recall the, the millions of dollars, but that is... Well, I think it, it started off at $25 okay. million. The city okay. council pitched in some, and then I think sure. it was left at $11 million. Sure. Um, let me just share this with you all. Some of you may like, some of you may not. It's factual. In order to have a tier one educational system, you must have a city council that fully funds your educational system. There are certain programs in your educational system that cannot be touched, which are federal mandates. That's your Title I, your Title II, your Title III, your ADA compliance laws, your special education. Until we get to a point where we value education up here, not right here, up here, then we would not be in debt. Okay, now we go to Mariah White, and then Daisy Weaver, Kimberly Wright, that order. Can you repeat that question? Um, the first yes, part I will. I'll repeat it. Okay, part one. How did our schools get millions of dollars in debt? Teachers have to buy their own chalk, erasers, tissues, pencils, etc. It doesn't seem like the budget is even going to the schools and the children that need it. And then part two. Was it a good idea to cut plant service, transportation jobs from Richmond Public Schools and to give five-day furloughs to all employees in order to balance the budget? Um, I'm going to answer part um, one first. Um, part one is, was told to the public it was the Virginia retirement system, which got us into that, uh, I think it's said one million budget, uh, whatever the amount was. but. Um, I was down there that night uh, advocating for the uh, school board, and I felt that it started at the top at the uh, city council as well as the school board. Um, I don't know what put us in that predicament, but I know that the city council did not agree that they were going to give us any of the money. And as far as I could see, as the school board, somewhere it had to be been some type of finance, um, mismanagement or board too much, but our teachers should not be allowed to have to purchase their own material, their own chart, their own books. Um, I disagree with that whole entire um, 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 episode of our teachers have to purchase anything. 
As far as the second question, um, that's a passion um, that I have because I don't think they should have cut any of those. Any of those that old, they shouldn't have cut. They should have went back to the table. And the biggest thing about the school board when it comes to budget, there is no planning there. There is no budget prioritization strategy. We need to purchase things that is going to be priority. Not just spend money, just to be spend money that is not there. And that gets us into mismanaging money. And then you want someone to try to get you out. It's too late then. Then the community, everybody in the community gets involved. And we have no one to actually rescue us. So no, I was against everything about that budget. And I'm still against it. Daisy Weaver. Thank you. Uh, I think the choice of words debt, um, the twenty five the twenty million dollars that that you referenced, um, in the budgeting process there was a difference of twenty some odd million dollars between what the school board, uh, the school administration the school board asked that the city fund. Um, the reasons that were given, uh, retirement costs going up, contribution required asked by DRS was higher. Cost of benefits, health care benefits, have ballooned over the past few years. Um, and those are some of the reasons given, as well as there has been, there was a heavy reliance, I believe, on federal funding over the past year. It was one-time funding. That went away. So you end up with the difference if you were to maintain the same level of service, uh, at the same cost, you end up with that big gap between what was requested and what needed to be funded. When we talk about um, funding, there will always be a big gap um, between what we, what we want to do. So it does come back to prioritization. And I think it's very important that the, when, when the budget decisions are made, that, it's, that the budget is looked in totality. Not just schools and, 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 and schools versus city, but the totality. After all, um, city administration, I believe, has grown over the past few years. Um, if you're allocating it to city administration, then you're not allocating it to schools. So the total picture needs to be looked at. And in terms of plant services, whether or not it should be cut, that's something else in terms of the, um, the importance of the plant services staff and the transportation staff and their impact on, on children. I am the daughter of a uh, public school custodian. My father raised nine kids serving as a custodian in Richmond Public Schools. And I know the uh, relationships that he built within the school building, um, after school programs or the recreation uh, centers that he stayed around and helped to open. And he, was very, he built very important relationships with these children. So it is important that everybody in the school building is there to touch children and they have an impact on children, as well as the importance of the bus driver in terms of the safety. And we talk about bullying and what's, what happens on okay. the bus. That's another yeah. okay. uh, area Thank that's you. important. Yeah, Kimberly, great. <laughs> yes, um, with respect to the budget gap, um, there, there was a gap and a big part of it was funding the retirement system um, contribution from our end and health care costs that increased. However, uh, I do not think that we looked at the budget in its entirety and we didn't use all of the recommendations that have been afforded us through the multiple audits that have taken place on our systems. And I would have looked there first. I came forward um, two years ago with several options to cut almost $17 million out of the budget. So I do believe there's there are ways that we could have cut the budget and saved our hardest working, lowest paid staff. Um, I, if I were to do layoffs, I would probably start looking in the central administration first and before I go to our lowest paid, hardest working employees. Um, the five day furlough, I didn't, I didn't um, approve of. I thought it was excessive. That, that constitutes a 3% pay cut for our teachers and staff and it's, it was unnecessary. It's obviously unnecessary in the wake of the um, news that we've reopened a building that's gonna cost us $400,000 a year to operate, and we've put, we're planning to put over 200,000 in repairs and maintenance in the building, so that's $700,000 roughly that was found overnight. 
So I don't believe that it was a unnecessary thing that we had to do. Thank you.